It's the distant future, the year 3000, and the universe has run low on its most precious resource, cheese. Lurking in the dark corners of the galaxy, two groups have emerged in the battle for the few remaining pieces of cheese. On one side, the space ninjas. On the other side, the pirate squirrels. There's not much time, and there's even less cheese. These two ancient foes must now battle head-to-head -head for the last few creamy blocks of delicious goodness. Who will win the battle for today's coveted block of cheese? Stay tuned to find out during another episode of... Space, Space Ninjas vs. Pirate, Pirate Squirrels! Greetings to all of my space ninjas and pirate squirrels. Are you guys ready for another week of the battle for the cheese? Woo! That was pretty good, but I know that you can do a lot better than that. I said, are you ready for the battle of the cheese? Yeah! Woo! That's more like it. Today we're going to be learning all about what it means to do things God's way instead of our own. A lot of times we like to be the boss and we like to do things the way we want to do them. But when we do things God's way, we live in peace. In order to learn that, we're gonna have an epic competition. But before we get started, though, let me explain how it works. The object of the competition is to be the team with the most points by the end of the hour. Each one of these is worth one point. Your team will be collecting them throughout the lesson. There are three ways that you can earn energy. <laughs> earn points. Energy, team participation, and team competition. And at the end of the hour, we will count up the points. Whichever team has the most will win the coveted Wheel of Cheese. Last week, we heard about Joshua leading the Israelites. Mm -hmm. After Joshua died, though, God sent the Israelites new leaders called judges. Mm -hmm. These weren't like judges that we have and you think of and they're sitting in the courtrooms are going, I'm guilty. Instead, their job was to lead the Israelites and help them make good choices. Unfortunately, this turned out to be really hard. Let's see what the Israelites were doing wrong. The first team that can open up their Bibles uh, and read Judges 2, 13 to 14, will get some points. Do you think you have it? All right, let's read this together. Judges 2, verses 13 to 14. Because they forsook him and served Baal and Ashtoreths, in his anger against Israel, the Lord gave them into the hands of the raiders who plundered them. He sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, whom they were no longer able to resist. Instead of doing things God's way, the Israelites did things their own way and worshiped other gods. Because of that, God would let their enemies defeat them. But then the Israelites would cry out to God and he would send them a judge to help them do things his way again. Here, let me show you what that would look like. On this side of the room is God's way. And on that side of the room is our way. You all are going to be Israelites and I'm going to be the judge. After Joshua died, the Bible says that the Israelites started doing things their way. They started hanging out with evil people who convinced them to worship and follow false gods. So I want everyone to walk to the our way side of the room. Unfortunately, terrible things happened to the Israelites over there. Their neighbors would attack the Israelites with their armies and conquer them. I want all of the space ninjas to show me their most dramatic death scene. And then the Israelites would cry out to God for help. I want the pirate squirrels to yell out, God save us, in your most dramatic voices. God save us. <laughs> God would hear the Israelites cry and said to judge, that's me. The first judge was named Othniel. He led the Israelites back to following God and doing things his way. Both teams head back to God's way. When the Israelites started doing things God's way, everything got better again. And then there was some peace. So I want everyone to put two fingers in the air and say, Peace, dude. Peace, dude. Nice. But that never lasted for very long. Eventually, the Israelites would forget about God and wander back to doing things their own way. Walk back to our way. 
And guess what happened when the Israelites did things their own way? That's right. They were attacked by their enemies and defeated. Okay, we're gonna pause the video and you're going to do this all over again. Head on back to God's way. Woo, peace, dude. And then come back our way and cry out. Just like the first time, God heard the Israelites cry, and he sent two more judges named Ehud and Shamgar to lead the Israelites back to him. Everyone back to God's way once again. When the Israelites did things God's way, there was peace in the land. So put up your two fingers in the air and say, peace, peace dude. dude. Over the course of about 350 years, the Israelites wandered away from God seven times. And each time they wandered away from him, God sent judges to bring them back. In all, God sent 14 different judges to help Israel. But the Israelites would always struggle to do things God's way. Now that you've heard the story, I think it's time to see how well mm -hmm. you were listening. Are you all ready for the big battle for the cheese? Here's how the battle for the cheese works. I'm trying to do my announcer voice. <laughs> I'm gonna ask you, and Michelle's gonna ask you a series of multiple choice questions. If you think you know the answer, turn to your small group leader and tell them what it is. Your small group leader will hold up the sign with the most popular answer for your group. If you're watching from home, you could just shout it at your TV screen or computer screen or a tablet or iPhone, however you're watching this. We will be keeping score here at the church and you can do the same at home. Here we go. Michelle? Okay. After Joshua died, God sent some rulers to lead the Israelites back to him. What were the rulers called? Presidents, judges, kings, or priests? Hmm. Could be presidents. Mm -hmm. Could be presidents. I like that. Mm -hmm. After being defeated by their enemies the first time, God sent the first of the heroic Hebrew judges to deliver the Israelites. What was his name? Obadiah, Zechariah, Alfred, or Athniel? Othniel led the Israelites back to following God. What happened every time the Israelites did things God's way? Hmm. They lived in peace. They were attacked by their neighbors. God led them to a new land or their crops would die. Ooh. When Othniel died, God sent two judges to bring the Israelites back to him. What were their names? Shadrach and Meshach, Samson and Delilah, Ehud and Shamgar, or Naomi and Ruth? The judges ruled over Israel for about 350 years. During those years, how many judges did God send? 12, 9, 14, or 5? In today's story, whenever the Israelites did something God's way, they were at peace. But whenever they did things their own way, they had some trouble. And you know what? It's the same for us. Let's take a look in today's Bible verse, Psalm 1830. Let's open up our Bibles together. God's way is perfect. The word of the Lord doesn't have any flaws. He is like a shield to all who go to him for safety. God's way is perfect, and when we follow him, he's like a shield that protects us. 
when we do things God's way, it leads to peace. I have a question though. What do you think it means for a kid to live in peace? What does that look like? When you live in peace, it means that you don't feel worried or afraid. It also means that you get along with the people around you. And when we live our lives the way God wants us to, when we do things His way instead of our own, we avoid trouble and we live in peace. Unfortunately, that can be kind of hard sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to do things God's way. God's way is to be patient with others. But sometimes we just want to blow up at our little brother. God's way is to put others first, but sometimes we just want to be selfish. Doing things God's way always isn't always easy. But when we pray to God and ask Him for help, He gives us the strength to make the right choice. That's what we're going to do right now. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that even though your way is, is difficult sometimes, we know it is the right way. Thank you for being an example of the right way. Thank you for giving us patience when it's hard. Thank you for helping us be selfless, even when we want to be selfish. Thank you for sending your judges to bring your people back so we have an example of what it means to follow your way. Be with us this week. In your precious name, amen. And if you're watching from home, be sure to do week three activities. And we will see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.